What's up everyone, Chris here from Mainly Mesh. Today, we're gonna talk about string into the inside. Now, over the years, I've made a very concerted effort to not yuck anybody's yum when it comes to stringing. First and foremost, when it comes to your stick, this is a game of preference. What is my favorite pocket might not be yours, totally okay. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it in terms of body mechanics, in, ter in terms of your size. So I've obviously over the years developed what I think is best for the widest range of people, but that doesn't mean that there isn't something out there that might be your absolute favorite thing in the world. And it could be very different from mine. That's okay. In recent years, obviously stringing to the inside has become very popular in the stringing community. We haven't seen it really featured on any large scale production, but there's definitely a lot of people that swear by it and there's a good reason for it. As I believe I've mentioned on this channel before, but I'm not quite sure, in my mind, the biggest advantage to stringing to the inside doesn't have anything to do with the actual performance of the pocket so much as it has to do with ball retention. You're essentially placing that mesh a little bit further in, which is essentially thinning out that throat of your stick. And we know that's an advantage for ball retention because they changed the whole head spec rules a few years back to widen heads out to even the playing field. So there's obviously a little bit of advantage if you can thin out that head in any sort of way. Now, the title of this video is a little bit clickbaity. I'm not condemning stringing to the inside for eternity, but I thought this was important to relay to you guys. Basically, when I string to the inside, I don't wanna ditch my pocket mechanics that I have once again developed a certain preference for. Unfortunately, the channel and the stack that I kind of require in my sticks for it to feel right to me tends to work in combination with stringing to the inside to apparently create an illegal pocket. So a few weeks ago in our game, uh, basically I got my first stick check of the year and in my entire playing career, I have never received an illegal stick penalty. In my time at Mainly Mesh, when I was stringing a lot of sticks for a lot of customers, I don't think we had a single report of an illegal stick, and that was very intentional. I obviously want to push the performance of your stick, but to me, a three-minute non-releasable penalty is such a game-changing penalty that is something you should avoid at all costs. And I think there are plenty of ways to work within the rules of stringing that create a really solid advantage without even coming close to creating an illegal product that might hurt your team. So needless to say, I was a bit surprised when I received a three minute non-releasable. Might have been a bit frustrated, you could say. But sure enough, with this bad boy test, wasn't coming out. Obviously the ball slid out there. This is a basically more or less new head no wear and tear, mesh isn't very broken in. The reason why I try to avoid towing the line at all with any sort of stick illegality is that heads wear very differently over time depending on what region you're in, whether it's hot out, whether it's cold out, your mesh can break in differently. And so as heads warp, you really kind of have to build in a little bit of a buffer zone in your pocket to make sure that as the head gets thinner, as the pocket gets deeper, then you're not creating an illegal product. And basically the setup I was working with absolutely was. And this isn't just a one-time case. Basically I checked all of the Z1s I had strung up with that pattern, not just mine, coaches I had given it to, a couple players I had given it to, all of them, definitely illegal. Also of note, I also checked my Mirage strung to the inside and the Surgeon 900 strung to the inside, also illegal. So it wasn't just a Z1 thing. Now, your obvious pushback is gonna be like, well, Chris, just change the pattern. And can you string a stick to the inside that is legal? Sure. But because you have to string a thinner pocket, again, my style of pocket doesn't work when strung to the inside. It doesn't maintain its legality. The only way for me to account for that is to push the pocket higher than I want it to be, to remove the stack, to remove some of those pocket dynamics that I rely so much on in my sticks. So in an abundance of caution, I am not going to be posting stringing to the inside tutorials on this channel anymore. Again, the main reason just being the point of this channel and my pocket tutorials in general is to give you something that's gonna work, it's gonna work really well, but you also shouldn't ever have any issues with it. There is always room to tweak your pocket another 2%, 5%, trying to make it the single most advantageous pocket with the most hold and the most snap you can possibly give it. That's not what I'm here for. I wanna give you really good, consistent pockets that you can throw in your stick that you are easy enough to string, that you can do it 
if you don't have that much experience and still have a great time playing this sport. So I had my little experiment with being fun. Unfortunately, that experiment has come to an end, but I wanted to let you guys know why you won't be seeing any more of these fun tutorials. I'm gonna go back to the bread and butter. I'm sorry. But as always, I really appreciate your feedback. So if you guys have strung up sticks to the inside, first of all, check them. Let me know what your experience is with that. If it's not illegal, let me know what you did. Always curious, always appreciate the input and helps me continue to learn. Students of the game, always. Thanks so much for watching guys. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. I should have a good amount of content coming up for you guys this week because I'm on my really late spring break. Catch you guys next time.